Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Another pet peeve. Who's got a pet peeve about the... the um... Uh, oh, there's the fight between the, uh, the training community and like the, the gun tuber community sometimes. The tr- oh, so, oh. or, or I would, I should oh, say, yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> or, or yeah, maybe not necessarily just the gun tubers more like the ins- IG. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody's on IG. So I guess maybe that's the battleground where it takes place and YouTube mm-hmm. and, and the training world or like the actual trainers real world. What is the fight about? Yeah. Like what's, what's the beef? It's that you see, well, you can see, for example, about the uh, the couple in St. Louis is the perfect example of this. Okay. So you, you get the battle between, I guess you almost want to say, the training community and the people who are devoutly Second Amendment. Like, mm-hmm. not, nothing nothing gets in the way of the Second Amendment. Uh, you know, pretty much like what you were saying, Rhonda, mm-hmm. where you kind of critique, well, you know, they didn't follow the four rules. They need to be a lot more responsible, and sometimes that reflects badly on mm-hmm. on the rest of us who are trying to convince people who, let's say, they, they're totally anti-gun. Mm-hmm. So it becomes difficult. Mm-hmm. So I, I saw a lot of battles between trainers who were basically like, well, no, they set a really bad example, or they were completely wrong. And you see kind of that fight versus, I guess, the normal, either the fan community, I guess you could say, like, the people, uh, you know, normal folks in the chat okay. getting mad at trainers. And all that stuff and then you see everyone gives their two cents and then ev- inevitably when you watch videos you can tell i think he's talking about that dude and like kind of like trying to contradict them and you kind of see it sometimes with those issues or everybody tries to critique technique and things like that okay so let's uh so before we get into this here let's establish where everyone's at on uh these folks in st louis with the uh kind of like Miami Vice mansion, I don't know, 80s movie thing that went down. Uh, Rolando, mm-hmm. where are you at on that with those guys? Just briefly. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, we talked yeah. about it. I think, you know, from the emo- I, I I'm coming at it from two sides, mm-hmm. somebody that's kind of new in the community. Mm-hmm. So I'm more like the normal Joe on the street uh, gun owner, mm-hmm. John Q. Public, if, 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 if you want to put it that way. Mm-hmm. So from a visceral perspective, I, I could understand the the uh, wanting to defend your home and being afraid, especially like Rhonda said, the media has painted everything as so. You see the extreme of everything, every bad thing that you can possibly happen. So every every situation that you're in now mm-hmm. is painted mm-hmm. behind the lens as this is the absolute worst case scenario that I'm walking into. Mm-hmm. It can't be anything less than that. Mm-hmm. So from that perspective, I understand it. But also as somebody who's more educated in guns, somebody who wants to get into training and things like that. I, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have approached it that way. Okay. So, all right, let's but, see. Uh, actually, mm-hmm. I think Trump is actually going to intervene in the governor of, uh, of Missouri. They said, huh. okay, we'll, t- <laughs> I, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll get on that here in a second. Yeah. Devin, what do you think about that whole thing that went down? Uh, Rolando had a chance on a previous thing to get into it. I know you haven't here, but I'm sure you've talked about this in the podcast or someplace. Uh, I have an opinion. Honestly, I haven't given it any attention. Like, once I saw the video, mm-hmm. I was like, obviously people are not very familiar with the guns that they have. Mm-hmm. And I just knew it was going to be a show, to be mm-hmm. honest. So, mm-hmm. honestly, I didn't give it very much attention. Like, okay. you So, you me, weren't stressing like, it? Nah, because, first of all, these don't seem like very, very pro-gun people in the first place, mm-hmm. given their neighbors and who they hang out with Mm -hmm. so it was like what's the point and the fact that they went outside when nobody was coming to their house they were going to the mayor's house because the mayor just doxed them so there was a reason why they were marching there in the Mm -hmm. first place Mm -hmm. so to me they just to me it seemed like they were over enthusiastic they probably just got guns because of the pandemic and they thought that they were about to go honestly this is what I call uh, white privileged mm-hmm. social justice warriors. Because, mm-hmm. like, what were you doing? You're in a big house in a big gated community. Like, stay inside. Like, what are you doing? What are you going outside to meet them with? With mm-hmm. uh, uh, Walter PPK mm-hmm. and like your most nostalgic M16. Like, dog. 
That's probably Calm down. that's maybe what they had. But yeah, we'll, okay, we'll we'll touch on that. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Let's get Rhonda in here. Let let us know what you think about it. Put that on the record. Yeah, was that a touch of gun snobbery there? I, I, I'm not <laughs> no, because both of those. What I what I'm saying is both of those guns are very popular guns, but mm-hmm. you won't see anybody really defending their houses with those guns. Right. I, That's why you can tell like there's. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of things with the gun. So yesterday in the news, it came out that the pistol that she was using, fake, yeah. it w- well, it wasn't fake. It's a real gun, but it's inoperable. Operable. Yeah. yeah. So apparently, you know, these guys are lawyers, which goes back to part of which I think you said, well, who said this? Was it Rolando? I don't know. Or Devin. But you said that one of, yeah. one of you guys said that they're not really like gun people. Well, yeah. they're lawyers and they made their money by suing people. And one of the people that they were suing was actually a firearms manufacturer, and they had that yeah. gun to use in court, so it was made inoperable, obviously, because it was coming into court. So that came out yesterday. There you go. So, uh, yeah. So, Rhonda, you can hit us. <laughs> <laughs> it so keeps getting deeper every day. Say is, what I will say is, I don't think, I think you would have been hard pressed to find any gun owner Mm -hmm. who would have had a problem with them coming out on their lawn with their guns holstered. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even with their gun facing down Mm -hmm. before you're, you know, the position before you're shooting Mm -hmm. on a range. Mm -hmm. I don't think mostly anybody would have had anything to say about that. Mm -hmm. Simple. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very simple. I wouldn't suggest anybody not protect their property Mm -hmm. or anything else. Yeah. Um, but that something so small could have literally snatched that narrative mm-hmm. from the media easily. I don't even think, I, you know, they wouldn't even be going through the process they're going through right now. Mm-hmm. They can't stop you from walking on your property holstered. Mm-hmm. Like, you can do that. Mm-hmm. Now, when you go to pointing these guns at people, basically, you know, kind of calling for some type of reaction now you have a case on your head now it's a viral story right um so so here's my thing here's my thing to that right like we always have to have what's you know what's called empathy right so not not that you have sympathy for them but empathy meaning that we could put ourselves we could see uh we change our point of view and we adjust that to their point of view and understand how maybe this thing can roll up on because we're all we're all of us here we're looking at it from our point of view but these people were in their home this is what they're saying right and we should at least go with that if we weren't there uh they were in their home they heard all this commotion they know they live in a private neighborhood they don't know anything they don't know that the mayor they knew i'm sure the mayor lived there and also i've seen in the news that they were all always suing people that lived in their neighborhood so um, they, they had clashes and things like that with people already in their neighborhood. But what they knew is that there was a whole bunch of people outside. They've seen things on the news lately. They didn't necessarily know if those guys were going to the mayor or whatever. And they got scared. They came out. They grabbed a pistol that they knew was inoperable. That's what the woman had. A gun that she yeah. that she knew was not a working gun. We don't even know what's up with the that AR. That sounds like intimidation. Now that we know the gun was inoperable, that sounds even Well, I crazy. think that's what she said. I think she said she was acting, acting like that because she was scared of what those people were going to do. And she was trying to scare them into not... But what I'm trying to say to you is like maybe we could put ourselves in a position where we think these people were at home. All of a sudden, there's a whole bunch of people. They've been looking at the news... Right, and it's some part often, of this, hey, huh? How often do you run to something you're scared of? Like, if you're scared, like, like for your life, right, right. How well, often do you he, walk directly into that? He, like, it doesn't. It's not. I, I know they were they were supposedly eating dinner outside first, so they're on their porch, and that's why they saw yeah. everything happen. So did they yeah. go back Maybe. inside? Grab yes. Yeah. So and, yes. and listen, now, they 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 put this house together. Yeah. I believe, and I'm not trying to. They yeah. they bought this house um, in a bad state and restored it, right? So maybe in their minds, they're thinking, you know, they've seen people going around rioting, destroying things, and they're like, oh crap, this home that we've built, you know, there's people coming here to destroy, and this is what they did. Now, me personally, yeah. 
I'm gonna, if there was something all of a sudden happened like that, the first thing that I want to do is get my hands on guns. I want to make sure I have guns and magazines for those guns, right? right? And I have my hands on that. And I have to assess whether or not, like, before I go out the door, where I at least have the barrier of the door that someone has to come in that door to get me, before I go out there, I agree with you. I'm gonna go, is there a reason why I need to go outside? <laughs> Or do I just need to be in here and uh, waiting to meet whatever's happening? And, waiting to defend yourself. Yeah, and seeing if you're, people you're, are just going down the road. But for some reason, you know, they went out. Like Rolando's saying, maybe they were already out. Well, here's here's the point of contention that mm -hmm. I've seen with people with that. And this is where I think from a tactical perspective, because I always agree mm -hmm. you want to barricade yourself in and you want to get in the most defensive position possible. The issue Unless you is, think someone's going to burn your building down. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. With Molotov cocktails, if you think that they're going to burn your house down, mm -hmm. you almost want to be outside to prevent them from doing it in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem that we've seen, that Molotov cocktails are usually – that's the go-to yeah. thing for, for what yeah. we've and seen look, in the news. Windows so. – I mean this is what I'm trying to say about empathy, right? You have to realize that like – so if you're restoring a house, windows, dude. Windows yeah. are expensive. If people If people start smashing windows – that's expensive you know they've got a I, I get like you know they've got this big brick house and all that kind of stuff but there could be things that they didn't like i listen even you said it if they went outside and they were just at low ready you know i think i remember uh kevin dixie coming on the show saying that it, he's he's from st louis he said oh, i forget i forgot what um there was some situation that went down a few years ago and there were riots and things like that. And he heard people were coming to his neighborhood. He went outside. Ferguson. Yeah, Ferguson. He had, I yeah. think he had a sling. He was low ready. You know, right. that that right. was his That's thing. understandable. Yeah, and we saw other people doing that at stores. But yes, it, exactly. if, we, if we go back to this, these guys um, don't, I, I, I don't want to say that these guys are in the gun community. You know, they live in a completely different world, and they're probably indicative of all the people that are right now out there pushing up the price of guns, and they're buying all the guns in the world. All the people who were like, we need gun control, <laughs> you know, there's too many guns out there, and then all of a sudden this stuff starts happening. COVID-19, lockdowns, no, the, the cops aren't out there, then there's riots, and then there's defund the police, and everyone's like, oh, I need to defend myself now. Mm -hmm. And they found themselves in the heat of that, they, this is what they found themselves doing, right? Yeah, I think this goes to kind of a paradox that I see within the gun community, mm -hmm. and that is we simultaneously don't want, and, and I mean, I, 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 I sympathize with the 2A absolutism. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much on the side of the fence where I am, but I also understand from a logical perspective that we demand that we don't want any rules to purchase firearms, but then we get angry at other firearms owners for behaving irresponsibly or stupidly mm -hmm. when there's really, I mean, yes, responsible gun stores mm -hmm. give you resources, but if you go to like a pawn shop, mm -hmm. they're, they're selling a lot of other stuff. They don't take their time to really answer your questions or do things like that when you purchase a gun there mm -hmm. versus, I, you know, I go to two totally different kinds of gun stores. Sometimes I go to a pawn shop because I like the local guys there. And sometimes I go to this really like five star epic range down here mm -hmm. and it's two totally different things. And you can see the guys in the pawn shop are nice, but if you go there, they're not necessarily going to volunteer. Oh, have you ever owned a gun any before or anything like that? Whereas at this other store, they might be more inclined or they have enough people there that, hey, this person will help you with that and they'll explain it to you. Mm -hmm. Kind of have this. It kind of goes to the snobbery of we don't want any regulations but we also want everyone to behave responsibly. Well, we have to have a balance of providing the resources there. Yeah. And yeah. we also have to sympathize that people are gonna do things that are dumb and that doesn't mean they should lose their rights. Mm -hmm. So as long as they don't kill anybody or hurt anybody, of course, that, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. So they're lucky to hear that, they, that their stupidity didn't result in anything bad. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Rhonda. I think that's a, a great point. And I also like the fact that uh, Hank brought up the uh, people that were defending, you know, their stores and stuff mm -hmm. in within the, you know, cities, mm -hmm. um, because that's that perfect example of us seeing the news saying, "Oh, look at the, these armed uh, these armed protesters," but it wasn't nearly as viral mm -hmm. and as polarizing uh, because of the way they were handling. 
their firearms or mm-hmm. had them holstered or had them on the sling. Mm-hmm. And so that's what, what I mean about people kind of feeding um, into these narratives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want people to uh, understand my, uh, misunderstand my point that, you know, we obviously um, want them to be safe and things like that. And I think it was totally fine for them to even step on the front line. But sometimes it's just like, throwing a dog a bone and then when the media reacts everybody's like why do they treat gun people like this Mm -hmm. i mean you make it so freaking easy it's their job like sometimes y'all just make it so 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 easy Mm -hmm. and that's why i have to come in and explain to people okay well uh this is not really what responsible gun ownership uh typically looks like Mm -hmm. um and so these were some of the pros of that these were some of the cons if you were in this type of situation this is what i would suggest Mm -hmm. so the media can't run with your story, so you don't end up in court like they are and what they're going through now. Yeah, yeah. Devin, did you want to jump in here? Um, that I Again, I'm going to echo Rhonda. That's literally why I said in the beginning I didn't give it too much mm-hmm. attention mm-hmm. is because I already knew, like, just from the imagery with her mm-hmm. on her, with the lady and uh, her finger on the trigger, just mm-hmm. pointing the gun, like, aimlessly at everybody. I just knew what was already coming, and I was just like, yeah. I'm, I was just over it already, yeah. to be honest. Pro- like, yes. There's so many incidences <laughs> of this going on, and like she said, if we're going to throw them bones, mm-hmm. like we really can't complain about it. Yeah. Uh, not to say that these people are gun community people, yeah. no. but it's I like, don't think they are. I think we, we can agree. What was going to come after this. Yeah, story. I think we can agree these guys are outside the gun community. But it's that whole question, right? Is the Second Amendment only for the people in the gun community? Is it only for right. white people or black people or men or women or this thing? No, it's actually for everyone in America and everyone in the world should be able to defend themselves. I think the situation here is is close to, to what Rhonda is saying that, yeah, the media chose these people, right? But this thing yeah. happened. This thing happened to them. And we all have to give them some kind of thing for that. Like something happened. They obviously, if they're not in our community, then um, if they're not looking at the videos that we're looking at or having access to the information we're looking at, they're not going to know any way to react. They're just going to react naturally, and naturally they're going to make mistakes. The media is going to jump on that. What happened on our side is we're so desperate for heroes. And when I say we, I'm talking about all of us, yeah. not necessarily me, <laughs> but you know, let's put ourselves in that category. We're desperate for heroes, and we're like, oh, they could do nothing wrong. No, we right. we have to look at that as like this is a teachable moment. Exactly. <laughs> this exactly. is a moment. Like I told, I remember telling Lola, "Woman, something like this goes down. Do not move away from me. Okay, stay where I'm at." The reason for that is, and I've seen it. Right? You know, I don't know how many people actually out there in the world have like been in the middle of shootouts. Or, or been there to observe a shootout happening in front of their actual eyes and not on TV and all that kind of stuff. I've seen these things happening just growing up and a lot of tactics that people use, but even if you just look at some nature programs, right? When, when p- animals are hunting in a pack and they, and they have like, um, let's say they have two animals they're trying to pick off, they're going to try to separate you. Yeah, That's right. what they're going to do. They're going to try to lure someone over here. So, And I've just seen that happen in real life. That doesn't take training. That's nature. So if she separated, and now, now we know, the reality of what we know is they knew that gun was completely inoperable. Okay? Did not have bullets in it. And she's out there trying to intimidate this, these people in, in uh, the protesters, Right? And, and let's say they were just going by making noise. Now they're paying attention to you. And you're out there trying to pay it. Like, so if someone wants to, like, decided to go over to her, forget about if her finger was on the trigger and all that. She knew she had a gun that was inoperable. So if his gun was operable and hers wasn't and she got close to the crowd and they pulled her into something, what's he going to do? Right. He's going to yeah, start right. shooting at the crowd. But they don't know that. These guys didn't mm-hmm. know that. This couple did not know that. Okay, they did not understand what they were really getting in the middle of. And the least that we could do, even if it's not for their benefit, for our benefit, we need to tell each other like, hey, talk about this. If this happens to you, if this happens to us, don't go out there if you don't have any actual guns. Yeah. 
okay have actual guns make sure they're loaded they're operable you know what you're doing yep. don't get in a situation where you could shoot each other this happens all the time we could talk about this um, there was something that I pulled up from the news where I believe that it's a accidental discharge situation that that we're looking at that we'll talk about here in a second but these things happen make sure to check out hankstrange.com you can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts